Hello, folks. I thought I would show off a little bit of my uh, Mets autographs. And I think I got a Nick, Nick also in there, of course. And just some kitschy Mets stuff while my dog romps around on the futon. Here's some Shea Stadium dirt. Oh, yes. From the pitcher's mound. And some Shea Stadium grass from just outside the pitcher's mound. Thank you very much. Kind of balled up into a mud clod, though. Dang it. Huh. My uncle knew the PR guy. <clears throat> He's got him some dirt. I used to have a picture of the guy getting it, but I don't know. Um, it's kind of cool. We all know the Brooklyn Dodgers. This was the Brooklyn Robins. Pre-Brooklyn Dodgers. That's what the Brooklyn Dodgers were. Before they were the Brooklyn Dodgers. The Brooklyn Robins. Kind of a cashy crystal glass net ball. That I acquired somewhere, I don't know. Very heavy. Very heavy. Weighed like a pound and a half, two pounds. Dave Kingman, Kong, autographed baseball, and he inscribed it, 442, home runs. Bobby Brown is president, so that's an old ball. Jerry Kuzman, the Kuz, one of my favorite pitchers of all time. Sweet spot. How about Ron Swoboda, 69 World, World Series champions, the Miracle Mets, autographed in silver, Met Daddy helmet. Very nice. And I have a little certificate of authenticity with it from the card shop it came from. This is something I've only seen once before. A New York Met, 1969 World Champions. World Champions, it says. Um, w O R L D S. World Champions. Um, collector plate from Texas Ware. Texas Ware. I've looked it up. I have never seen. Well, I saw one on an auction site like three, four years ago, and that was it. Never seen one before, never seen one since on anything. Um, got a hold of Texas where they couldn't tell me anything about it. They have a catalog out. Nope. <laughs> oh, that's cool. All right. A Joe Namath jersey. He was my guy. Nolan Ryan. New York Met. Game worn jersey with Met blue pinstripe. I and mean, he was only on the Mets for three, four years. Three years. So that's very rare. That's a keeper for me. This guy's supposed to be hot stuff coming up, I hope. Familia. This was my guy from the Knicks, pre Patrick Ewing. Bernard King. Blue and gold out of ultimate. He was, Jordan said he was the best guy he ever played against. He was, he was known as the king before Jordan. He was awesome, awesome. Buddy Harrelson, autograph on a 74 top star. We all know Buddy. Rusty Staub, second year card. On the Colt 45, that's what they were before they were the Houston Astros. But one of my favorite Mets of all time. Also known in Montreal as La Grande Orange. Carl Erskine, blue and auto on one of those shiny 1991 or so upper deck stick, sticker cards. Pretty cool. Brooklyn Dodger. 
my dad's favorite team, being, being from Brooklyn. Hope this guy does something. Matt Harvey is supposed to be also the next big thing, but I'm at such his rookie card uh, update and highlights. Pull this out of a pack. Don't know anything about the guy. Taylor Whittington, but it's cool, sparkly. First Bowman card, sparkly. BP81, Bowman Prospect 81. Hmm. Um. Little Mike Piazza jersey. RBI Kings, Fleer. Greg Jeffries, who was supposed to be hot stuff in the match, and he was. He was great for him for a year or two. Never lived up to his billing, but then they traded him, and he had one or two great years. Still, I think, finished with 2,000 hits, I think. Zach Wheeler. Top prospect at the moment. He's supposed to be another big one. Dylan G. I like him. Blue Ink Auto on a Bowman rookie card. I like him. Eddie Cranepool. Steady Eddie. This is out of Topps Archives. Ed Cranepool. Blue Ink Auto. Played for 17 years, my whole childhood, <laughs> and teenage years. Chessie Orozco, little pen auto I got. You see on the card there, Jesse Orozco? He was great. Doc Gooden. Black Ink Auto. On a 1985. Top card. The year he went 24 and 4. Man, 24 and 4, a 153 ERA, 268 strikeouts. Man. Lucas Duda. I like him. I hope he does something this year if they keep him. I like that kid. Lee Mazzelli. Every Met fan in the 70s knows Lee Mazzilli. He was the Derek Jeter in terms of looks and dating hot chicks of the 70s in New York. He was the, the they used to call him the Italian Stallion. <laughs> no lie, Rocky just came out and he was coming up, so he was a kid from Brooklyn. And he had two great years for the Mets. 16 homers, 60 ribbies, hit 275, stole 30-something bases. Then the next year, 80 ribbies, hit 300, 180 hits, 40 steals, and he was voted to the All-Star game. And his only at-bat in the 79 All-Star game hit a home run. I leapt off the stupid sofa and went running for my sister, yelling, he did it, the Zilly did it, even though she wasn't even home. She had all his posters on the wall. All the girls in New York had his posters all over the wall. Um, then they traded him. Uh, on the next at-bat, he came up in the All-Star game, and he got a walk. He walked in the winning run. So he had a home run and walked in the winning run in his only All-Star game ever. And then they traded him a year or so later, and he never got more than 200 at-bats in a year, and that was it. You know, he came back to the Mets in 86 or 85, though, in a pinch-hitting type of role, you know. But he was great for those two years. Nowadays, a dude with 15 homers, 80 ribbies, 40 steals, and 300 would be making 20 million bucks, you know. Oh, well, you missed your time, Lee Mazzilli. <laughs> Tug McGraw, look at that beautiful auto on it. That's actually out of a, uh, I believe that's out of a card pack. Ted Williams put out his own brand for a while, and this was on it. Tug McGraw with a smiley face. One of my favorite Mets of all time. You gotta believe. And he would always, he always beat his glove on his, on his leg after he struck somebody out. <laughs> Mike. Piazza. Too bad it's not in a Dodgers uniform. Oh well. It's on a 93, 1993 Mother's Cookies card. In a Gigantor thick case. 
that weighs like a half a pound. But Piazza Autos are pretty rare. If you get it on a regular car, and like I have a pack, it's like 100, 150 bucks. But TTM, they're not worth that much, 20, 30, 40 bucks. And, well, I do have, I'm not going to show you all my yearbooks and stuff like that. I do have a Dave Kingman bat. So Louisville Slugger 2, Hillerich and Bradsby. You can't really read it, but it does say DK4. If I can figure out it, there it is. It does say DK4 on the, bat, on the bottom of the bat. It's just hard to read, which is Dave Kingman and his number. Somebody told me at a card show where I got this that this was a game used bat. It's heavy. It's so heavy. It's like no Holland is here. It's none of these, you know, today mats that are so hollow and so light. This thing is like Babe Ruth heavy, man. Uh, let me see, the, you know. But somebody told me here on YouTube that, no, nah, dude, Slugger 2s aren't game used bats. They're retail. But, boy. Why would they make a Dave Kingman bat retail anyway? And why would they make it so heavy? Oh well. And put DK4 on the bottom. And then no cupping. As you can see, that's what bats used to look like. Alright. Well, that's my New York stuff. Just figured I'd show you all. Sorry about the stupid webcam sound and delay. Thanks, folks.